Pursuing my cosmic quest, I'm diving in the Sea of Cortes in Mexico. Herman Cortes was the Spanish conquistador to whom we owe not the discovery of Mexico, if not his attempt to kneel Mexico before the crown of Spain. Here, the earth reminds me the resistance of the First Nations, the Periques, Guaycuras, Cochimis, Guajirios, Mayos and Pimas, the Seris, Tohono O'odham, the Kukapas, and finally the Yaquis, who still live here. Following my intuition, I'm searching for their sacred songs, their beliefs, their dances, their cosmology. The Sea of Cortes separates the peninsula from Baja California of the Mexican continent. Its waves break in the west on the shores of the states of Upper and Lower California and to the east on the states of Sinaloa and Sonora. This region of Mexico is known for its deserts that border the sea, its arid lands, its spectacular mountain ranges and its hard, burning sun. It's almost 50 degrees Celsius here. The name of these reserves bears witness to this inferno, El Cajon del Diablo, the Devil's Drawer. Mount Tetakawi is the gateway of the Cajon del Diablo nature reserve. It is an iconic mountain, sculpted by time, like a castle without door or window overlooking the sea. Mount Tetakawi is a ceremonial place for the Yaquis, Guaymas, and Seri tribes. Its name means Mountain of Stones. Don't we say that if from stone comes the mountain, it is from man that comes humanity? On these sacred grounds, it is with the skies that I have an appointment. The sky is like an endless movie to me. I'm always fascinated to see what's going on up there. To watch the sky is to remind ourselves of the cosmos, to remember our infinite smallness. The sky has always been here for us. Even if our lives have known so much change, the sky is always present. And when I look at the sky, I feel a great peace, like when I am with a good friend. If the sight of the sky fills you with joy, if some grass springing up in the fields has the power to move you, if the simple things of nature have a message that you understand, well, rejoice yourself. Your soul is alive. It's a bit for that that I've always loved deserts. In appearance, you can't see anything, you can't hear anything, and yet something shines in silence. And I wonder, isn't life the best friend of silence? Don't you hear? Trees, flowers and grass grow in silence. Is it not silence that teaches us to love music? A bit like it is darkness that teaches us to love colors. I know it is in solitude and silence that we learn the most beautiful lessons of life. Look at the stars, the moon and the sun, how they move and silently illuminate us. From silence is born everything that lives. It is the silence that connects us to the universe, to infinity. The silence is the root of existence, the balance of life. And in the silence of the stars, appears the sacred deer of the Yaqui people, the mediator between heaven and earth, between the spiritual and material realms. Sacred, cosmological and cultural symbols since the pre-Hispanic times, the deer is the animal which represents spiritual superiority. He is a symbol of regeneration, of gentleness, grace, intuition, of goodness, fertility and peace. He embodies purity, harmony, and order with nature. When the deer appears in our life, he teaches us about how to be gentle, even in difficult situations. He reminds us that a gentle soul is not helpless. On the contrary, a gentle soul can be strong and proud. Symbol of tenderness tempered by strength, he is the companion of our innocence discovering the world. He enlightens us, supports us, guides us, and shows us the right path. He symbolizes independence, both physical and spiritual. The deer becomes our guide and an interpreter of the invisible. The silence and the invisible, these two immeasurable forces which govern the whole universe. Imagine life as a large invisible vase, and we, we represent what we pour into this vase. 
Let's pour kindness, empathy, gentleness, and these vase will overflow with love, just as life overflows with love. Do you realize that all this time, the sun never said to the earth, you owe me something. It is thanks to me that you live, could say the sun to all living beings. And yet, never, the sun gives life on earth without asking anything in return. Do you see this love? It lights up the whole sky. And at night, it is not one sun, but millions of sun who send us love from millions of light years away. In this infinity, in this silence, in this invisible, I never feel alone. They are here, the spirits. They are here, the suns. Many men worship an invisible God and massacre a visible nature. When will they understand that nature is this invisible God? The greatness of a nation can't be measured by its conquest, its richness in gold or diamonds, but in its harmonious and respectful relationship with nature, with the animals, with the land and the seas, and with the silence, and with the invisible.